Reports are multiplying of deadly burns caused by Israel's use of white phosphorus bombs in Gaza. Yesterday, I had a chance to speak with Sarah Lee Whitson of Human Rights Watch about the practice. Let's recap. The Gaza Strip is about 25 miles long and between four and seven and a half miles wide, with 1.5 million people on a good day, one of the most densely populated places on the planet. Over 900 Palestinians have been killed since the Israeli invasion began December 27th. Half are civilians. And throughout the Israeli air and ground offensive, there have been reports that Israeli forces are using a weapon called white phosphorus. Now, the Geneva Treaty of 1980 states that white phosphorus should not be used as a weapon of war in civilian areas. Israel continues to deny that they're using the white phosphorus tool, and its army spokesman, Major Avital Leibovich, told Al Jazeera that we don't discuss what weapons we use, but I can assure you we don't use any weapon that are prohibited by international law. There are other nations that do use phosphorus bombs, and we have the right not to comment on this. Now, she may have been referring to the United States and Great Britain, who've used white phosphorus in Iraq in different ways, most notably in Fallujah. On Grid TV, to try to help us sort this stuff out, we welcome Sarah Lee Whitson. She's the executive director of the Middle East and North Africa Division of Human Rights Watch, and she's conducted numerous human rights missions in the Middle East over the past 15 years. Sarah Lee, let's try to sort this out. Now, there's some confusion about whether white phosphorus is a tool or a weapon, hence my confusion in the introduction there. What do you call it? What is it? Well, white phosphorus is actually a chemical. Uh, it's a chemical that can be used as a tool or it can be used as a weapon. Um, it can be used either way because it's actually a chemical that ignites um, and burns whatever it touches. When it ignites, it emits a very bright light. Um, so you can use it as a tool to mask your troops or light up the sky so that you can see where you're going. Um, you can use it also to smoke out uh, the troops of the other side. Um, you can also use it as a weapon if you launch it in artillery shells. You can use it to attack something and burn it down. Mm. Now, that's what we've been hearing about and what we've been seeing, some of us, when we see the photographs of victims of white phosphorus burns. There was a picture that was very widely seen yesterday in the paper on, on Tuesday, I guess it was, that showed a child that had been burnt on the face and in some parts of the body. How does that happen? Um, you don't need to be attacked with white phosphorus in order to suffer burns from white phosphorus. Even if it's shot in the sky, if it's low enough, um, the chemical, which will dissipate in the air, if it touches you, will burn you and leave these kinds of burns. Which reminds a lot of people of napalm. It does. How does Human Rights Watch confirm um, the reports that this stuff's being used? I've seen the photographs. Is that evidence enough? Um, no, it's not evidence enough. It's an indicator. Um, our uh, research team is at the Gaza border, has observed um, in the air um, the white phosphorus, which is a telltale uh, chemical when used, um, seeing its uh, very uh, marked uh, lighting of the sky, which indicates that it's being used. So even um, from a long distance of the border where a lot of the absolutely. observers are being kept, you can actually see the stuff's being used in the sky. Exactly. But that itself, by the sound of it, isn't ipso facto illegal. No, it's not ipso facto illegal because, again, it would be lawful to use it merely uh, as a tool to light up the sky or mask your troops. However, you can't use it even as a tool if you're using it in civilian areas, in areas that are populated or have civilian objects. Objects, um, because it will burn whatever it comes into contact with, whether it's a building or a person. Which takes us back to the Gaza Strip. You, you, there is no unpopulated part of the Gaza Strip, at least. I mean, I've been there. I don't think it would be fair to say that anywhere isn't a civilian populated area. Well, there are agricultural areas, open fields where there aren't people uh, inhabiting an area. There are places that are purely desert, even with that, that, within that tiny territory that are uh, open areas. And so it would be okay to use them there. Um, but in fact, that's not where the white phosphorus has been used that we observed. That's not where the white, the phosphorus used shells have been found. They've been found in Jabalia and other populated areas. So it's clear that Israel has been using the white phosphorus um, in areas that are populated. Now, the uh, Israeli military spokesperson we quoted there um, is smart to say, well, there are other countries that use it because, of course, the U.S. has used white phosphorus most recently, as far as I remember, in Fallujah. Where else? And was it used? legally or illegally there? Um, well, you know, I, I, it is true that it's been used by um, the United States, um, not only in Iraq, but in Afghanistan. Um, and uh, 
it's something that we haven't focused on specifically to go into whether or not the use was legal or illegal because it really depends on where it was used and how it was used. Um, regardless, though, the fact that um, someone else might have used the weapon um, does not uh, necessarily uh, make uh, the Israel's use of it unlawful. And what we're saying is, yes, Israel can use this, may use this lawfully, um, hypothetically speaking, um, but it can't use it lawfully in populated areas, whether as a weapon or as a tool to mask its mm. troops. Now, uh, Cynthia McKinney, the former congressman from Georgia, um, was on our program yesterday, and she said, you know, pish tush to these divisions, these, d these definitions, really, this stuff should just be banned. Do you well, agree? Well, you know, I mean, I guess when you say that you can't use it in civilian areas or in populated areas, you are saying effectively it should be banned because it's uh, not clear whom you would be, uh, for example, in Gaza, trying to mask your troops from if not from a populated area because virtually all of the fighting is happening in populated areas. Um, I think we need to recognize that in order to pass a treaty that would ipso facto ban it, we would need the buy-in of states who are going to try to justify the use of the weapon as much as possible, like the Cluster Munitions Treaty that um, we've succeeded in getting uh, passage of. Um, that was done by saying it can't be used in populated areas, which is effectively mm. uh, banning it.